Have you ever wondered how a legal suit is framed? Well, the answer lies in Order 2 of the Code of Civil Procedure, more commonly known as the Frame of Suit. This order sets the stage for how a suit should be constructed, providing a blueprint for legal action. The Frame of Suit is designed with a clear objective, to offer ground for a conclusive decision on the matters in dispute, and to put a stop to further litigation concerning them. Think of it as a roadmap that guides the course of a lawsuit, ensuring that all relevant issues are addressed effectively and efficiently. Its importance cannot be overstated, as it plays a crucial role in the legal process, guiding the plaintiff and the defendant as well as the court in addressing the issues at hand in a systematic and organized manner. So buckle up, as we're about to dive into the specific rules of Order 2. Let's demystify the legal jargon and make sense of this crucial component of the Code of Civil Procedure. Firstly, we have Rule 1 of Order 2. This cornerstone of the Code of Civil Procedure sets the stage for how a suit should be shaped. It's the backbone of the frame of suit, and its purpose is twofold. One, it ensures that every suit is framed in such a way that it provides a solid ground for a final decision on the subjects in dispute. This means that the suit should be structured comprehensively, addressing all aspects of the dispute in question, thus paving the way for a conclusive ruling. Two, Rule 1 aims to put a lid on future litigation concerning the same subjects. It's designed to prevent the same issues from being dragged into court over and over again. It's about making sure all stones are turned in the first instance, leaving no room for the same dispute to resurface in the future. In simple terms, Rule 1 is all about resolving the dispute completely and preventing future litigation on the same matter. Next, we have Rule 2 of Order 2. This rule is a crucial chess piece in the game of civil procedure. It sets out that every suit should encompass the whole of the claim which the plaintiff is entitled to make in respect of the cause of action. Think of it like this. If you're bringing a suit, you need to put all your cards on the table. Every claim you have against the defendant needs to be included. But wait, what if your claims exceed the jurisdiction of the court you're filing in? Well, here's where the rule throws you a lifeline. The plaintiff can relinquish or let go of any portion of his claim. This is to ensure that the suit falls within the jurisdiction of the court. It's like leaving some of your cards behind to play in a different game. So, Rule 2 is about including all claims in the suit but giving the plaintiff the option to relinquish some claims if necessary. Lastly, we have Rule 3 of Order 2. This rule, my friends, is all about efficiency and practicality in the court of law. It states that a plaintiff may unite in the same suit several causes of action against the same defendant or the same defendants jointly. Let's break this down. Imagine you're a plaintiff and you have multiple grievances or causes of action against the same defendant. Instead of filing multiple suits, which can be time-consuming, expensive, and frankly, quite exhausting, Rule 3 allows you to unite all these causes in the same suit. In other words, it's like rolling all your complaints into one big snowball and throwing it in one go. This rule not only simplifies the process for the plaintiff, but also streamlines the court proceedings, making it more efficient for everyone involved. In essence, Rule 3 allows a plaintiff to combine several causes of action in one suit. Now that we've broken down each rule, it's time to summarize. Order 2, the frame of suit, guides us on how to construct a suit. Rule 1 emphasizes that each suit should be designed to offer a basis for a final decision, aiming to avoid further disputes. Rule 2 insists on including the whole claim that the plaintiff is entitled to make. However, it also provides the plaintiff with the freedom to relinquish any part of his claim to fit the suit within the court's jurisdiction. Lastly, Rule 3 allows for the union of several causes of action against the same defendant or defendants in the same suit. It's also worth noting that the application of these rules often interplays with other orders and rules within the Code of Civil Procedure. Understanding these rules can give you a solid foundation in framing legal suits. Stake